Watching Edinburgh and beyond, please welcome the puller of the perfect pines, the pub landlord, Mr. Al Murray! To the ladies, good evening. Hello, hello and welcome to Edinburgh and beyond, where we go to Edinburgh and then beyond it. If you've ever wondered what was beyond Edinburgh, this, this is it. This <laughs> is what is beyond Edinburgh. That's where we got the title from. Anyway, well, look, just look at this lovely audience down here. Hey, there's a young lad down here who seems to have a ring caught in his eyebrow. <laughs> he walking past the jewellers and it exploded. <laughs> That's the only sensible explanation for everything like that, son. What's your name, pal? Paul, what do you do, Paul? You work for a media company doing what? Uh, data inputting. Data inputting. <laughs> You're a secretary, aren't you, son? <laughs> <laughs> you disgust me. Is that your girlfriend? Yeah, fantastic. What's your name, darling? Antonia. Antonia. Let me say this right now, Paul. You are batting well above your fucking average there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You've got that one clean out of the park, haven't you? That's incredible. <laughs> you must have an amazing personality. Yeah. <laughs> We got yeah, the young lad here with the legs. What's your name, son? Chris. Chris, beautiful British name. What'd you do, boy? Uh, I'm a student. You're a student. What are you studying, son? Well, I just retired. You ju you've just done your A levels, have you? Mm -hmm. Have you passed them? Of course you fucking have. You've done them, haven't you? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Turned up, signed your name, you lucky bastard. <laughs> I remember when it was possible to fail your exams. <laughs> <laughs> Now, <laughs> you're beautiful. A gentleman who's suited and booted in the tie, in his jacket and tie. What's your name, sir? Elliot. Elliot? Beautiful British name. <laughs> Are you posh, perchance? Sorry? Are you posh, perchance? Uh, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you do, Elliot? I'm a student as well. I'm a student as well. <laughs> what are you studying? Doesn't really matter. Daddy will give me a job at the bank anyway. Bloody <laughs> mm. marvellous. You got a dog? You got a dog? Black Labrador. You have, haven't you? Hey! Come on, old chap. Let's go and shoot some pheasants, huh? <laughs> Who are these two? They're your butlers. Uh, with these two. <laughs> you guys are here. What's your name, son? Michael. Michael. What do you do, Mike? I'm a student. You're a student? Yeah, what are you studying? What are you studying? Um, uh, maths. Maths? <laughs> 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 maths. <laughs> maths. <laughs> Favourite number? <laughs> Hey? 37. 37. Is that off the top of your head? Or is that actually your favourite number? Don't lie to me now, you little turd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fairly odd, isn't it? It's, it's fairly odd. Yes. <laughs> A number is either odd or even. <laughs> Not fairly odd. <laughs> Trust me. Strikes me you were saying more about yourself then than any bloody number, mate. Hey, fairly odd with Elliot. Elliot, yes, jolly good. Bloody marvellous, yes. <laughs> and the final one of the, th the third chap there, what's your name, old chap? Jack. 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 <laughs> He's so posh, he can't even say his name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jack. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, yeah? <laughs> You're shooting as well. You're shooting as well. What are you studying? Politics. Politics? Oh, Christ. Hey! hey. You don't, don't run this country anymore! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Given up on you ever since you made us run out of a ditch to our deaths in our millions, eh? <laughs> I don't like you. Right. <laughs> Three posh monkeys. <laughs> Welcome, fellas. Nice to meet you. Yeah, well, <laughs> what else do we have? <coughs> Lady here, what's your name, darling? Linda. Linda! Classic. What do you do, Linda? Mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineer? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> Mechanically engineered today. Air conditioning. Air conditioning? <laughs> no! <laughs> You're living a tissue of lies. We don't require air conditioning in this country, love. Let alone women to fix it. Back down. <laughs> now.
But the first of our acts <laughs> is singing here on Edinburgh and Beyond. He's a brilliant talent, intelligent, incisive. His topical stuff is a cut above the rest. So, why he's agreed to do a programme that could be on at any point in the next two years, thus blunting his topical edge, beats me. You're not that clever, are you, son? <laughs> Hopeless. So, please welcome one of my favourite ads of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr Robin Inns. <laughs> Hello. This is... It's nice being in the theatre, I've got to admit. It's, it's kind of it's slightly daunting, but I've, I've spent a long time... Just looking around at the audience, and I've spent a long time doing student gigs for really about the last year, and, and it's just been very odd, because, one, I can look at you and I can see people who are old enough to have tasted the ashes of their dreams, which is good. <laughs> um, <laughs> And two, I've been doing student gigs and I'm too old to do student gigs now. Because I walked out at one, I was at Nottingham University, and it was the day that I turned 37, and I looked at the front row, and they were all 18, 19 years old, and I had that ghastly revelation where I just thought, oh my God, I have just realised that I'm old enough to be the parent of some of the people here. <laughs> if I came from a different socio-economic group. Um, <laughs> It's really weird. If, you are, if you're in your 30s here, th there's a weird... Or 40s, there's a weird thing that happens where you don't realise you've got older. <laughs> Previous generations were lucky. Us generations, we don't know we've got older. I have this thing where, you know, the last generations, for instance, you know, they were lucky. What happened was they got to their late 30s, developed some kind of work-related lung disease, <laughs> coughed up black spittle that would sizzle on a grate, <laughs> and then died at the age of 47. Right? It was sad but at least they had a narrative arc, right? <laughs> Whereas I'm of this generation that's just there going, yeah, I like the Arctic monkeys too, they're brilliant, aren't they? Look, I'm wearing Converse. <laughs> Who's that sad old twat? It's reflective surface. <laughs> and you suddenly realise you may well be the paedophile at the gig in their eyes. It's not a pleasant moment. <laughs> I have been fascinated by the fact that they are wait, making sure paedophile season is on again and the government are campaigning saying that one of the things they should do is stop paedophiles living near schools. Now, my one thought is that I don't think it's proximity that drives them on. <laughs> I don't think if it's a bit of a walk, they're going to give up, you know. <laughs> Brilliant, they're nearby. How long's the walk? A mile. Oh, I don't know if I can be bothered. <laughs> Can I have some of the sweets? No, we'll have nothing to beguile them with then, you idiot. <laughs> so I started to think about groups that I'd like to belong to because I didn't really seem... I didn't... Well, yeah, I thought about New Age people. I thought maybe I could join the New Age cult. So I went to Devon, but that was a disaster. I kind of... I went to mind-empowering crystal shops. And I looked at these things and I thought the only way mind-empowering crystals work is if you put one of them on and then immediately go, bloody hell, 50 quid for this rubbish, I can't believe it. <laughs> then your brain is expanding, right? <laughs> and I would listen to these conversations they were having and there would be things like, my grandmother um, had terrible arthritis, um, but she drank a bottle of olive oil a day. I go, did that work? I don't know, but it was a very quick cremation. Right, so... <laughs> I was thinking about... Christianity. I thought maybe I should get into Christianity. But then I got worried about this whole thing with, with creationism in schools. Now, I don't know if you know about this. There's this big thing that's going on at the moment where a lot of campaigners... It started off in the 80s. People believed creationism should be taught as a science. There are two sciences here. There's evolutionary theory, which works like this. The Earth has uh, existed for a quarter of a million years, uh, then a quarter of a billion years, then eventually uh, small creatures were created via amino acids. They became unicellular organisms, then they became multicellular organisms, then there were changes of season, changes of atmosphere, uh, then the strongest survived, and thus we continued. <laughs> While the creationist theory is magic man done it. Um, and this seemed to have some problems, so they had to go off, and then they came back ten years later and went, ah, we were idiots previously, but now we have a new theory. Now we have a new theory called intelligent design. <laughs> not stupid design, not idiot design, intelligent design, yeah. And it's really, if you don't get it, maybe it's because you're not brainy enough, right? So it's very simple. Go, OK, what is it then? What is your theory? Very, very simple. This is basically, there were lots of small creatures, they're unicellular, multicellular, then they got bigger, and then, uh, and then uh, the strongest survived. Brilliant. That's, that's quite a lot of hours. That's, that's <laughs> been, uh, 
Um, it almost is ours, isn't it? Well, it is, except we've got a couple of differences, you know, like a thing and that. Sorry, what? There's a thing, just a thing that sometimes... What, what do you mean? What is the thing? Well, sometimes things in nature are really difficult to understand, really, really impossible to understand, and, and, and so there was a force. <laughs> sorry, sorry, what, what do you mean? Uh, there was a, a force. What, what, what was the fo Just a force. What was the force? Magic man done it. Get out! <laughs> and Tony Blair wants this taught in school. He actually thinks it's a good thing. He said, teach them this. You know, and I don't know how that's going to work in schools as a science exam. You know, why does metal... Why, why, why does metal conduct electricity? God's will. You know, <laughs> what makes salt? Lot's wife. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Good night.